Apologies particularly to the members of the public that haven't been able to get seats. Um, we normally in the chamber because of the amount of interest we have, but there's a problem with the, I was going to call it technology, but it's clearly not. Um, <laughs> it's not working, so we're back in here. Um, item number one is the evacuation procedure. We're not expecting the fire alarms to go off, so if we do, we'll treat them for real. <coughs> If we can go out through what is the only door, but down the, the stairs, out the front door, and meet across by the Yorkshire Bank. If anybody needs any help in getting out, give us a shout, we'll make sure that happens. Um, it's also a good time to remind people to put your phones on silent or to switch them off, please. And just uh, also to remind people, what people may not know, is we do record uh, the majority of our meetings at, at the council and they go out on YouTube a couple of days after the, the meeting. So the, this meeting is being recorded. Mm -hmm. Item number two is to receive apologies. We've had apologies from councillors Wilson and Budkin. Item number three, we've already um, confirmed the minutes of the meeting on the 18th of September. Item number four, uh, to receive any declarations of disposable pecuniary and other interest in accordance with the Members' Code of Conduct. If it's not already listed, or if you become aware of it at the time, just let, let us know. <coughs> Item number five is declarations of contact. I think it's probably fair to say all members have been contacted in regard to the application of Highland Lane. Mm -hmm. Yep, mm -hmm. okay, so. Um, and you? Yeah, Councillor Graham. Yes, I've been contacted by both of the objectors for item number two, uh, but get no indication of which way I may be or may not be got into it. Okay, thank you. And yeah. Yeah. Councillor, sorry. Yeah, uh, item four. I've had conversations with residents about this site. I haven't given any indication, however. Okay, thank you. Item number six are applications where the public have indicated a desire to speak. If I just run through that process for you, because there will be people that have been here before. Um, the officer will present the report. Following on from that, we'll take the speakers <coughs> as listed. Um, under the Constitution, you're allowed three minutes to speak. I will be strict on that, so when the egg timer goes off, I will stop you from speaking. That's just so it's fair to everybody. However, members may ask for any points of clarification. There can only be points of uh, clarification from what's uh, been said within that three minutes. Again, following on from that, the officer may want to come back with, uh, with anything additional and then something will be moved so that we can get the debate started. Uh, hopefully, a decision will be made today it isn't always. Sometimes we um, defer things for site visits, or as in the case of the first one, for extra information. Um, but hopefully, uh, the items will be debated in a decision taken today. Okay, so that takes us on to item number one then. Hill Farm Golf Drive, Manita. Thank you, Chair. This application is for the change of use of an existing agricultural store building used to store potatoes to a B1 business use. The site is part of the Hill, of Hill Farm accessed off the end of Golf Drive via a narrow private farm road. The site is within the Greenbelt. As members will recall from the last planning applications committee, the application was deferred for officers to seek clarification <coughs> on whether the proposal would have any undue impact on the housing allocation, policy HS9, which is in the emerging borough plan, and vice versa. Whether the movements associated with this housing allocation had been factored into the highways response when considering the TRICS, which is Trip Rate in Information Computer System database, and for some information into lay terms as to what size the building is similar to. Um, they all, you also deferred it to seek clarification on whether there was an actual end user. This information has all been added to the agenda 
in the commentary section at the beginning of the item, and I will deal with it during the remainder of my presentation. The key issues to assess in the determination of this application are the impact on the Greenbelt, the impact on residential amenity, the impact on highway safety, the impact on the listed building. These issues are the main issues also raised in the objection letters received. As I've previously said, the site is within the Greenbelt. This designation is the strictest of land designations within the borough. National guidance and local policy both state that inappropriate development would cause harm to the Greenbelt and should be refused in, except in very special circumstances. The National Planning Policy Framework 2018 states that certain forms of development in the Greenbelt are not inappropriate as long as they preserve the openness of the Greenbelt and they also, it also confirms that planning policies <coughs> and decisions should support the sustainable growth and expansion of all types of businesses in rural areas, both through the conversion of existing buildings and well-designed <coughs> new buildings, and support the development and diversification of agricultural and other land-based rural businesses. In this case, the building is already on site, so it's considered that there would only be a limited visual impact and no significant other impacts on the openness of the Greenbelt. The development would represent a positive reuse of existing buildings, supporting the diversification of agricultural buildings with only a limited impact upon the Greenbelt. With respect to residential amenity, the proposed new use is to be a B1 industrial use. By definition in the planning <coughs> legislation, these types of uses should be capable of being undertaken in any residential area without causing detriment to the amenities of that area. The types of uses that could fall within a B1 use are offices, except for those such as banks or building society premises, <coughs> for research and development and non-noisy industrial uses. Members asked for clarification as to whether there would be an end user identified for this particular site. The applicant has confirmed that there is no end user. Because the way the site is marketed, most people will not take on a building before they know that they can actually move into it. So they <coughs> need to have permission in place before they're able to market the site. The building itself is approximately 380 metres from the nearest residential properties on St Andrews Drive and Golf Drive. Your environmental health section have not raised any objections to the proposal. Officers therefore consider that there would be no significant impact on the residential amenity of surrounding occupiers from the use itself. In regard to highway safety and associated vehicular movements, since the last committee meeting, the council has been in contact with the appellant applicant's agent and they are keen to stress that the access to the application site is not an unmade track. It is a private farm road which is hard surfaced. Both Warwickshire County Council Highways and the Rights of Waiting were consulted on the application and both have raised no objection to the scheme. As a result of the <coughs> deferment from the last application committee meeting, officers have sought clarification from highways as to whether the TRIPS data that was used took into account the movements to and from the proposed housing allocation in the Emerging Borough Plan. The response received from highways is that they are aware of the allocation and they have taken into account any potential impacts from the development on this access and vice versa when they were making their comments on the application. County highways have requested a condition that a lay-by is created on the access road to allow a space for passing and that a warning sign is erected. This has been added and appears as a condition on your agenda. Just on this plan here, the blue area here is the lay-by and down here at the entrance to the site is provision of warning signage. It's worth noting at this point that the use of the building previously as a potato store was unrestricted <coughs> on this site and could have generated many HGV movements that we had no control over, either number or timing of those movements. In order to control how this particular use is operated, two conditions are suggested on your agendas. 
Number seven restricts the operating and delivery times of the use to 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday to Saturday and 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Sundays and bank holidays. The unit is also not permitted to subdivide without the prior written consent of the council. For example, if there were two smaller units on the site, there may well be more vehicular movements with deliveries servicing two units rather than one. Hill Farmhouse itself is a Grade 2 listed building and as such, regard has to be had to any potential impact on that listed building. It's considered that since the change of use will not result in any structural changes, a condition is suggested, number six, to prevent outside storage, the character and setting of that listed building will not be significantly affected and it is not <coughs> sufficient as a reason for refusal. Members also asked further clarification from planning policy as to whether this development would have any undue impact on the housing allocation in the emerging borough plan. The policy team have <coughs> commented and do not consider that there will be any adverse impact. Members also asked for clarification as to the size of the building and what would be a similar size in lay terms. The building floor space that's proposed is about the size of four tennis courts. Each tennis court measures 260 square metres. A building with very similar floor space to the application site is the G&R scaffolding unit on the corner of Black Horse Road and Longford Road and some members may recall carrying out a site visit there in October 2016. A plan of that building has been added to your agenda. The GNR scaffolding building is approximately 1,090 square metres. This application <coughs> site is 1,115, so only about 25 square metres difference. The recommendation for this application is therefore one of approval, subject to the conditions as set out on your agenda. Okay, thanks Claire. Uh, for, uh, for the people that are down to speak, um, if you want to come forward, please do, but if you're more comfortable where you are, that's fine by me as well. So the first speaker is Mr Gilby. Thank you, Chair. Having read through the agenda, I can only see two things where there were significant updates of any interest. The first was the amazing news that the client actually lives in the farmhouse. He's a farmer, so there's a surprise, and it's totally irrelevant. And secondly, the GNR scaffolding building, which it was not made clear was actually in Black Horse Road, is also irrelevant because Black Horse Road is an industrial estate with main roads servicing it. We're talking here of a farm. From the previous meeting, we don't have any change to the other things. We still have a Grade 2 listed farmhouse, which is in the Green Belt. We still have a single track access part of which is a footpath. The footpath is part of the single track. To get out of the way of any vehicles going down there, when you're on the footpath, you either get over the fence on one side, or there's a drop onto the field the other of about two feet, so it's quite impractical. There's mention of signs. I can't see they'll be any good because the people ignore the signs anyway. There's no way they'll be policed because it's on private land. In the access document, it says there'll be around three vehicle movements a day. The County Council admit they have no idea how many vehicles will be using it, so how they can approve it, I do not understand. There's a comment made in the presentation just now about the HGV vehicles using the site previously. You must bear in mind that the potato store was loaded from the farm, so all the loading was done from the farm, the only HGVs, very, very few were from the farm. The access from the track goes past the small cul-de-sac or through the cul-de-sac outside number 102 and 104 Golf Drive. You then get to the junction of Shakespeare. A classic example of people ignoring the signs. The right of way is Shakespeare <coughs> into golf, but most people come up the cul-de-sac, straight up golf or down golf, straight down the cul-de-sac which they do not have the right of way, they cut the corner across the opposing traffic. We've got the access to the golf club, the double mini roundabout at the top, which is acknowledged by Warwickshire County Council in the borough plan as being a problem and at the borough plan meetings. We still have no use identified. 
On page 63 of your agenda, it talks about B1, but equally says B1 can become B8. B8 is storage and distribution, which is what they asked for before, and was rejected, or they withdrew it. And we still have the HSG9 issue, which doesn't seem to be a problem. You've had 61 letters of objection from 42 different addresses, and you've got 33 concerns listed on your agenda. I don't know whether you've carried out a site visit as a committee, but if you haven't, I very strongly suggest you should, because then you will see the impact. The footpath area particularly is concerned. It's well used. There are a load of people down Thank there tonight, so I came to here. Thank you very much. Are there any points of clarification? No. Thank you, Mr. Yorder. Thank you. <coughs> Mrs. Smith? Mrs. Smith? No, Mrs. Smith. Is there anything you want to come back on at this stage? Okay. In that case, to enable debate to take place, can I move the recommendation which is to grant planning permission subject to the conditions printed. Is there a second? I'll second it. Any member? In which case, the recommendation is to grant planning permission. All those in favour of that. And against? Abstentions? should know by now that when something's not been approved, something else has to be put forward. Councillor Smith? I've got, still got great concerns about this one. Um, Councillor Smith, we've got nothing on the table. Oh, sorry. <coughs> You're looking for reasons for objection. Reasons for? No. No, there's nothing on the table. <coughs> it was moved and seconded to grant planning permission, and that failed. So at the moment, there is nothing on the table. I'll, I'll have to move to the next item if nothing comes forward. Explain what you actually want, because we're all probably sitting here in amusement, thinking what. Every member of this room will know what is required. You to have a debate and a decision made on something, you have to have something proposed and seconded. Something was proposed and seconded, that was lost. So if nothing else comes forward, then the item's not there. I will move an amendment chair on the basis it, it, that sorry, it won't be an amendment proposal on the basis that it can be um, discussed. I will move a proposal that we refuse this planning application on the grounds that um, we do not have any indication of what this um, property will be used for and on the basis that um, the building may be completely out of character with, uh, with the local area and um, I don't think the highways issues are satisfactory either. I'll second. Sergeant seconded in. Um, 
I have to ask your advice on what you do with those My advice is that we would not be able to substantiate this as a reason for refusal if they were to make an appeal. Um, nobody needs to give us an indication as to the use of the building. What we are considering is a B1 use, which has to be ac acceptable in a residential area by its own definition. We do not give personal permissions for particular end users and it shouldn't, and the advice is that planning conditions shouldn't restrict that particular um, entity. The building being out of character, there are no physical changes to the building, it is already there. So that being out of character, it's already in place. They're not proposing any changes to it. Um, and that the highways situation is not adequately resolved. We have no objection from county highways and no objection from county footpaths. Um, it puts us in a very difficult position to be able to defend this on appeal and my advice is that we are likely to lose it and be um, potentially accept, um, a subject to costs if an appeal was put forward. It's important that members are aware of that. I mean, we, we've got those put forward, but the professional advice is that none of those reasons for refusal would stand on, on appeal. Any member? Councillor Smith. I, I'm struggling to get my head round why county are not objecting to a mixed footpath and what is basically a farm track uh, being used at the same time. Three vehicle movements a day is ridiculous. I don't see how a business operating from a building like that will only do three movements a day. We don't know what business is going in there, so we can't really tell that. But my concerns, I guess, are around traffic and footpath. That is a well-used footpath. And to have traffic on that same track uh, as a footpath, even with a passing point, uh, I don't see the relevance of that passing point other than for vehicles, not for pedestrians. I think it's just dangerous. Thank you. Any other member? Councillor Smith, you have the floor. Thank you. Just want you to all be clear on what you're voting for and the implications. It's been moved and seconded, refusal because we don't know what the use is going to be that the building is out of character and highway safety reason. All those in favour of that? And against? Abstentions. Okay, thank you, that's refused. Number two, please, which is the chestnut bedroom. Speaker. Speaker. No. This application is for a two-storey and single-storey extension to the rear of number one, the Chestnuts. Notwithstanding the level of objection received, the application is being reported to the committee at the request of Councillor Grant. The proposal property is a relatively large detached property of the Chestnuts, which is located on Woodlands Park just off Silver Birch Avenue. The, housing, the house is two-storey, gable-roofed, with a two-storey gable projection to the front. The house is a single-storey garage to the side, with a sloping roof and canopy to the front elevation. There are many other two-storey detached properties around the application site, but also some bungalows on the chestnuts and some on the roads. To either side of the proposal property are number 28 Silver Birch Drive, Silver Birch Avenue, sorry, uh, and <coughs> number two the chestnuts, which are both two-storey detached residential properties. 
The key issues to consider in this application are the impact on residential immunity, the impact on visual immunity, and the impact on trees covered by the tree preservation law. As members will see from the addendum, a correction has been made where previously number 30 Silver Birch Avenue had been referred to. However, 28 Silver Birch is the correct number for the neighbouring property. In regard to the impact on residential immunity, there are two properties mainly affected, which are the two neighbouring properties, 28 Silver Birch Avenue and 2 The Chestnuts. Number 2 The Chestnuts is cited to the east of the proposal in closest proximity to the two-storey section of the extension. The proposed extension would run roughly parallel to their boundary between the two gardens. The rear of number two is set roughly half a metre further back than the original rear of number one, which means that only around 3.5 metres of the four metre extension will project beyond the rear of number two. The extension will be set around a metre from the boundary, and as such, it's considered that this will not create a significant level of harm to the immunity of the garden of number two chestnuts. Number two also has some rear facing ground floor windows, but the distance standards within the residential design guide are next. No side-facing windows are proposed in the extensions, and as such there is no significant loss of privacy as a result of the extensions. Number 28 Silver Birch Avenue is closer to the single-storey element of the extension, which is proposed to the rear of number one. Number 28 has a side-facing kitchen window. It is not a primary window to the room, as there is a larger window in the front elevation of the house. The proposal meets with the distance standards held within the residential design guide. It is therefore considered that there will be no significant harm to the residential community and surrounding properties. Uh, the proposed extensions are to the rear of number one, the chestnuts, and because of this there will be very little impact on the street scene of the chestnuts. There will only be fleeting glimpses of the extensions within the street scene or that of Silver Birch Avenue. The road runs to the rear of the site, but again there should be no unacceptable impact on the street scene here. It is considered therefore that there will be no unacceptable harm to the vision, visual immunity of the area. <coughs> There are some trees in this facility covered by a tree preservation order, including T27, which is in the rear garden of number one, the chestnuts. It is an oak tree protected by tree preservation order 592. A tree report was submitted by the applicant. This was sub subsequently assessed by the Nuneaton Bankborough Council Parks and Countryside a tree officer, and no objection was raised. Conditions are recommended which would help to protect the trees during construction and to prevent storage of materials under the trees. In conclusion, therefore, the proposal is recommended for approval subject to conditions set out in the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Carlon. Okay. Good afternoon. Start when you okay, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, all councillors and members of the public. I belong to this property. I'm the owner of the property. The points that have been raised are the points against, so I'm going to speak in favour of them. The first point that was raised was a lack of privacy. I believe it's a straightforward rearward extension where the windows will have no impact on any of the gardens to my left or to the right to what it is now, so there's no privacy issues from my point of view. The proposal would, the, the other point was that the extension is not in line with the rest of the houses. There have been bigger extensions done within the area and on the same street. The corner house on the street is a massive extension, so I believe it will be in line with the houses in the estate. <coughs> the third point I was told that there will be increase in noise and disturbance and pollution. I believe the work will be carried out in the standard working hours set by the government, so pollution and uh, the other things don't come into play at all. Even the government wants to develop houses and this is the way the reven revenue is generated in the country. So an extension of this size would not have any impact on pollution or on any disturbance within the neighboring estate. I was told that it may affect the trees. A tree report has been provided by myself, which has been done by a specialist tree surgeon and is in line and guidance with, with the rules set up by the tree preservation orders. Uh, the next point was extension is too large. Again, it's in line with the residential design guide 2004. Uh, I was also told the house could be turned into an office. It's, it's, it's not the case. It is my house and I'm standing in a bedroom and I'm in an extra bedroom and an ensuite 
which will be an ensuite bedroom and an extension to the kitchen. So there's no point of me having an office converted into a house. It's my main place of stay. Uh, I was told that there could be higher risk of flooding. I believe there's no impact to this at all. Deeper foundations will be laid in guidance with the <coughs> set up by the building trade, which will rather solidify the ground and the neighboring area. Uh, I believe, I've been told that there have been bats which are habitats on, on the tree. The tree is not going anywhere. It is staying where it is. Of course, there might be need of pruning it because it overhangs at least three properties in the in the area. So uh, I believe these are my points for why the extension should take place. Uh, and that's everything from my myself. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any points of clarification? No, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Edwards. It's me. Sorry. We'll, we'll, we'll get to you. <laughs> Mr. Edwards. Hello. Good evening. <coughs> right, what I'm doing, going to do, I'm going to um, respond to the leaflet I've given on the impact of number two of the chestnuts. Uh, I have a photograph if anyone wants to see it on the back of my garden and showing where the actual extension is going to be which is going to block all this off. Firstly, to correct the first error um, on that report, the closest to the window to this extension is not a garage window as stated in the impact report. I don't have a window in the garage. The closest window is my utility room which is in the back uh, and with the back door facing the side of number one. And therefore, the 45 degree line which is drawn from this window, which is stated here, is actually breached. The proposal, according to the report, is over four metres long. Three and a half metres would be beyond the property, um, beyond the rear of number one. This is again wrong. The rear of my property is in line with next door, as per the photograph. The extension will ebb away from my property, as stated, but the distance between the houses from the top from the front to the back is six inches so by extending this out the extension ebb would be two inches making it insignificant in other words it would be parallel the extension would be 1.1 meters away from the boundary um, but the 2004 planning acts and i will quote this if the extension is within two meters of a boundary maximum eaves height should be no higher than three meters therefore this extension will be breaking the regulations. The extension will take nearly half the back garden, and as these are north facing back gardens, the only sunlight onto the back of my house comes when the sun is in the west. This will be lost, and of course all the light will be lost across right light well along the back of the house. An extra bathroom window is going to be installed. This will just be over my back door, intruding into my privacy. This means they'll be able to see straight into my kitchen through and into the lounge. We have no problems with the existing bathroom window in the summer when the window is open. Everything echoes in there like a kettle drum and I'm really not interested in what they get up to in the bathroom. I have to keep my back door shut. Now the oak trees, these are approximately 10 to 12 meters away from the back of the house. These oak trees are protection orders than I stated. Um, if I could to branch off, I could be in trouble with the council, I've been notified, I could be prosecuted. They would have to cut the tree overhang right back to accommodate this extension, which is going to go right out nearly halfway along the back garden. My fear is, not having read this report, but using common sense, <coughs> that this will cause the tree to be imbalanced. In high winds, this could possibly cause... Just your I've only got that little bit left to go. Is that okay? Um, um, yeah, Cartwright, when he built these houses, had to put the foundation in six feet into that. Now, as, um, I forgot where I was now. Um, to stop the foundation being affected by subsidence. As the extension is even closer to the trees, I assume the same rules apply and they'd have to go down even deep and this could affect the tree roots. Um, the report takes, states that no construction materials will be stored in the root protection, um, so not damage the tree, and yet they'll have to dig down into the root base to do this. 
the last sentence, this extension will be even more horrendous than the extension which you built down the road at the beaches. Thank you. Unbelievable. Okay, thank you. Are there any points of clarification? Can I just, Can I I don't, sorry, I, I don't know, Mr. Did you say where you live? Is it, is I right? live at number two of the Chestnut, which is next door. You said number two, right, okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Are there any other points of clarification? No? Okay, thank you. I don't know if you want to see that photograph. Pass it around at all? Yeah. Or if, if you members happy that it's passed around, yeah? Yeah. 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 You want to, yeah. That showed my back garden. Okay. Okay. You're not having another. Oh, side. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Carried away. <laughs> and uh, if anybody ever comes to this committee again, or submit to plan, it's useful if we can have anything prior to the main Right. Okay. Uh, Mr. Flynn, welcome. Thank you. Good evening. In 1986, my wife and I viewed the show house on Silver Birch Avenue, Woodland Park, Bedworth. We were so taken with the property, we wrote to Mr Cartwright and met him with a view to purchasing the house. On many visits during different times of the day and evening, the sunlight and airiness shone through every room. Mr Cartwright gave us a choice of plots, but none compared to number 28, Silver Birch Avenue. We waited many months, even losing the purchaser of our own home, before completing the sale. The extension applied for at number one, the chestnuts, will completely block out all sunlight and air that currently lights up our kitchen dining room, which we spend most of the daytime there when we are in. Eating, reading, writing, and in my wife's case, she sews and knits. It is also where our disabled granddaughter, who stays with us every weekend, sits with us as we read to her and encourage her to improve her lifestyle. The kitchen window in question would be completely obliterated with an outlook onto a large brick wall, making, taking away all the pleasure we currently have in the room. In closing, I seriously implore the committee members to arrange a visit to number 28 so as to see firsthand the deterioration in the quality of life my family will suffer in the future. Thank you for the opportunity to speak in chain. Okay, thank you for your patience. <coughs> um, are there any points of clarification? No? Okay, thank you. Cool. Do I anything at this point? Uh, just one thing, Chair. Um, Mr. Edwards mentioned that the utility room is uh, in the rear of the garage, which we also wouldn't protect, just to make it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Okay, to enable debate to take place, can I move the recommendation which is to grant planning permission subject to the conditions printed? Is that seconded? Okay. <coughs> Any member? <coughs> Thank you. Uh, <coughs> it seems um, quite concerning that we've got conflicting uh, reports um, with uh, sort of alleged breaches of conditions within broke up the reports but no objections from the borough council uh, and as for the backs of the uh, properties from both of the objectors uh, I don't see how um, extending the properties uh, cannot have any major impact on uh, light and visibility in those areas so I think that um, <coughs> in order for what's been alleged uh, particularly by um, the first objector to be investigated further and so that um, members here can see for themselves. Uh, I'm already fairly familiar with the area and uh, met both the objectors, but as I said, didn't give any indications. Um, <coughs> I think that it, uh, other members here need to see this. I'd like to move a site visit um, so that the <coughs> president can have a look and hear, uh, investigate further. Just before I ask if there's a second question, <coughs> you, know, you mentioned about the breaches, and I was interested in that. You was mentioned that there was a breach in regard to one part. Yeah, I think Mr. Evers re was referring to permitted development rules, so that's the reason it needs permission, not the reason it should be refused. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, can, can, I'm sorry, it, it's probably me, but can you just uh, confirm the reasons for the site visit that you're asking? Uh, well, f firstly, the um, speaker's recommended a site visit to members so they can have a look at the uh, lack of visibility for themselves. I mean, that's why I'd recommend it. Okay, it, it's been moved a site visit on the grounds of uh, the impact on the neighbouring property. Yeah? Properties. Okay, properties. <coughs> I was trying to help you out. They, no, were, no. they weren't the words you put, but there you go. Is that seconded? Yeah, seconded. Okay. Um, Councillor Beaumont. Yes, Chairman, I'd, I'd like to speak in favour of the site visit. Um, it's obvious looking at the photograph which has been passed around that the, uh, the massing of the proposed building as opposed to what you can see on that photograph does look like more impact on the neighbour than you would have envisaged just looking at the plans which we got here, which is just a ground plan really. Um, so I don't think a site visit would be well worthwhile before we make any decision. Okay, thank you. It's been moved and seconded a site visit to view the impact on the neighbouring properties. All those in favour of that? That's unanimous. So we'll, we'll pay a site visit prior to our next meeting. Um, if anybody needs any more detail on how that will be conducted, if you get in touch with the officers, they'll be able to explain that to you. Okay, thank you. Thank <coughs> yeah. you. to move on to item number three then, please. It's my brother-in-law acted as his agent for this application and my plantonator room went down and goes, oh, he's actually not ready to come yet, are we? I'll be in the middle of the night. I'll be in the middle of the night. Excuse me, if you want to have a conversation, can you do it outside, please? Sure. Thank you. Councillor Brand, do you want to go with them? To... No, no, we're. No, Councillor Brand, we're all. Claire, not Councillor Claire. <laughs> <laughs> this application is an outline application with all matters reserved and part of the rear garden of number 190 Higham Lane. As all matters are reserved, all that is being considered with this application is the principle of whether residential development should be located on this site. As set out on your agenda, there have been several <coughs> letters of objection to the proposal, covering matters including the previous history to the application site, the backland nature of the site, and the increase in noise and disturbance. Members have also received via email objections that have been sent to officers and we've been requested to pass them on specifically to planning committee members. Number 190 Higham Lane is roughly triangular shaped plot with the wider element here to the rear of the property and this wider element edged in red is the application site. To the north of the property in this location is an access way that runs from Higham Lane down to the Scout Hut and Higham Lane allotments. The key issues with this application are the principle of residential development on this site, the impact on visual amenity and the character of the area, the impact on residential amenity, highway safety and flood risk and ecology. In relation to the principle of having a residential development on this site, the land is currently garden land belonging to 190 Higham Lane. 
Planning legislation makes it clear that garden land is not to be treated as previously developed land. However, this does not mean that there is a presumption against allowing development on the site, but that other material considerations must be taken into account to determine if the application is acceptable. As members are aware, legislation requires councils to have a five-year land supply of land for housing. It is clear at this moment that the council can't demonstrate a five-year supply of housing land, and this is a matter that weighs in favour of the application. Taking the use purely as a use, the area is primarily residential, and the proposed use would not contrast with that. It's clear, therefore, that the principle of residential development on this site is acceptable, but this is not the only consideration to be had, and other material considerations must be taken into account. In relation to the impact of the development in visual amenity <coughs> terms and the character of the area, the Council's adopted Residential Design Guide and National Planning Policy Framework make it clear that local distinctiveness is an important consideration and that developments should be sympathetic to the character of an area. The distinctive pattern of this part of Hyam Lane, as you can see from the plan on display, is a ribbon pattern development with road fronted houses. <coughs> a development in this location of the application site is considered to be backland and that would be out of character with the established pattern of development in the area. There have been two similar developments proposed at, at this site in the past, one in 1994 and one in 2012. Both of these applications were refused by officers. An appeal was submitted for both of these applications and both of those appeals were dismissed by planning inspectors. In the most recent appeal, the inspector considered that the proposal would cause harm to the local area. <clears throat> it's therefore considered that this is, there is a significant impact on the visual amenities of the area and the character of the area to a level that would warrant a recommendation of refusal. <coughs> turning, to resident, sorry, turning to residential amenity, the agenda report goes on in, into significant detail regarding the neighbouring properties and potential impacts. I do not propose to go over this again, but it does appear that some development potentially could be accommodated on the site without detrimentally impacting on the neighbouring properties. In relation to highway <coughs> safety, the County Council highways have been consulted and have not objected to the proposal. As access is not a matter being considered with this application, highways have had to make an assumption that the access <coughs> track here to the north of the site is going to be used to gain access to the site, otherwise it would involve the demolition of some part of number 190 Higham Lane. They consider that there should be passing bays along this access track to reach the actual development site. So, Whilst the there would be potentially more vehicles using the access, it's not considered that the increased number is likely to be so significant to warrant a refusal on highway safety grounds. And as set <coughs> out on your agenda, is not considered to be any impact on flood risk. In relation to ecology, a preliminary ecological appraisal has been submitted for the site, which concluded that the site had a low ecological value. Our Parks and Amenities team have been consulted and they do have some concerns over this conclusion as there are trees and a pond on the site that you can see on the photo in front of you that do have the potential to have some ecological value. They are also concerned about the calculations that are made in this report relating to biodiversity. However, there is no firm evidence on this, on the loss of ecological value and in addition, as the pond is in the back garden of the applicant, it could be filled in without the need for planning permission. And the trees could be removed as they are not protected by a preservation order. It's therefore considered that this is not a significant enough reason for refusal. Officers consider that the harm created from the development of this site in a backland location 
and taking into account the two previous refusals and dismissals of appeal on this site is sufficient to wa warrant a recommendation of refusal. The recommendation is therefore refusal as set out on your agenda. Good evening councillors. As highlighted in the officer's report, the Borough Council does not currently have an up-to-date framework compliant development plan in place. The estimated time for adoption of the new local plan is spring 2019, and this is stated on the Council's online webpage. The officer's reference to 2018 adoption is overly optimistic and contradicts this. Until the, until the new local plan is adopted, the Council has <coughs> relied upon the safe policies of the 2006 local plan and is currently unable to demonstrate how the housing land supply for the borough is to be delivered. In the absence of an adopted up-to-date local plan and against persistent under-delivery of housing, paragraph 11 of the National Plan and Policy Framework is very clear. There is a presumption in favour of granting planning permission. The only time this presumption is not engaged is when one or more of the following circumstances apply. 1. The application of policies in the framework that protect areas of particular importance provide a clear reason for refusing the development, or 2. Any adverse impacts would significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits when assessed against the policies of the framework as a whole. In this case, the first point is not relevant because the site is not a protected site as listed at footnote 6 of the MPPF. The second point then asks us to consider whether there are any significant and demonstrable adverse impacts sufficient to outweigh the benefit of delivering more housing. Members should be mindful that there are no objections from statutory <coughs> consultees which indicate significant or demonstrable adverse impacts arising from this development. The objection and suggested reason for refusal will relate solely to a perceived sense of harm to the character of the area. I do not agree that the concern raised over character gives so rise to significant and demonstrable harm. It is acknowledged that Time Lane is a ribbon form of development. This particular site, however, is accessed directly from an existing driveway and is therefore distinct from the other properties along the lane. <coughs> the site has opportunity to deliver a frontage development to the driveway which would not feel out of place or context but would appear, instead appear as a natural extension to Time Lane, extending around the corner and fronting onto an existing driveway. There was also opportunity to deliver a particular housing type to assist in delivering an identified need. The site could deliver up to four bungalows, which is a house type and Leeton and Bedworth are particularly keen to increase the supply of. There was no obje objection to a planning condition being attached to the outline permission requiring the site to be delivered for bungalow development to meet this particular objective. There are clear benefits arising from this proposal in meeting housing and land supply. Whilst there will be an inevitable change to the appearance of the site from its existing condition, it is not considered the change as a negative one and certainly not significantly and demonstrably adverse so that it outweighs the benefits of delivering housing in a sustainable urban location. This proposal effectively balances the three roles of sustainable development meets with overall planning objectives of the MPPF and the presumption in favour of development points to the grant of planning permission. Finally, whilst the officer report refers to a previously dismissal appeal on this site, members should be clear that the shortfall in housing land supply was not argued as part of the previous appeal submission. Had it been the case that like the appeal allowed in respect of a similar site at 255 the long shoot, it is arguable that the former appeal inspector might have reached a very different out okay. conclusion. Sorry, I do have to stop you. Yeah, I've got one last sentence you allowed the other I'm man to say. Can I just say one last sentence? Yeah. For all the reasons set out, I respectively request that members reconsider the recommendation made to them by their officer and instead support the grant of planning permission. <coughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Well done. <laughs> Take a breath. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Are there any points of clarification? <coughs> okay, thank you. Uh, can I just oh, ask can about... Can I yeah. yeah. I think you did mention access up... Uh, I mean, I'm assuming this road, which this land... Uh, uh, faces onto is, yeah. a, is a public right of way. It is, yeah. Uh, but uh, the Highways Authority, and I think I agree with them, uh, thinks that it's rather narrow and passing places would be required. How would you go about providing those? There is a passing place uh, a bit further up, which is the gates onto the allotment, which is wide enough for two vehicles, and that's already in place there. Um, and a bit further up, there is already um, a passing place for two vehicles with the next uh, gates that go onto the allotments as well. Are you talk are those between where your land abuts this 
access way yeah. and high and lane or further up towards the yeah. no it's not oh. further up it's <coughs> our land is the, the, um, the, our boundary there is um, the gates onto the allotments dead opposite uh, still on our boundary which is a suggested yeah, entry into that's, it. that's where the applicant is referring to right Okay, yeah. but that I assume is private land, I'm not wouldn't be sure. The, the, the driveway between can, high can and Can I just stop you? So I'm Sorry. doing it right. Yes. Could we do that during yeah, the sure. debate if yeah. we get to it? Okay. okay. Are Thank there you. any other points of clarification? No, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Just to clarify, the access way is actually council owned land, um, and at the moment, as far as I'm aware, there is no agreement by the Neat and Bedford Borough Council to allow the applicants to gain access to their site from this piece of land. It would be something that they would have to address with the land and property team if the application was going to be granted. Yeah, but it, it, it's fair it's to say we've got an application in front of us, whether it's even if it was, if it was given permission, that's, a, that's something that has that's to be a neighbourhood neighbour thing to be resolved. Right, um, as I always say, to enable debate to take place, can I move the recommendation, which is to review, uh, refuse planning permission for the reasons printed? Is that seconded? Second. Any member? No? Well, okay. sure. uh, I mean, looking at it from here, I'm not keen on this as an application at all, really. There's the principle, I mean, four bungalows was mentioned, I think. That would be a later issue, but it's not just one little house that's being considered. I think um, the impact on the other people living on High and Lane, looking out of their back gardens, windows and so on, which in practical terms, which is the impact it's going to have. I, th I don't think we can go down that road. I think it sets a dangerous precedent, and that's without going in all to all the access uh, issues, which you know, it's, it's <coughs> a can of worms. So I don't think I'll be able to support this at all, Jeff. Yeah, and you remember? The recommendations as printed to refuse planning permission for the reasons as printed. All those in favour of that. It's unanimous, thank you. That's refused. We can move on to item number four. Country Road, Ordnance. is an outline application for the erection of six dwellings on land between 151 and 157 Coventry Road, Balkington. Access to the site is being considered at this stage, with all other matters being reserved for future consideration. As set out on the agenda, there have been three letters of objection to the scheme, covering points of lack of visibility, increased traffic and the Greenbelt location, and six letters of support covering issues that there isn't enough housing in the village that it would assist local businesses. As the recommendation is one of refusal and there have been more than five letters of support, the application must be determined by Planning Applications Committee. Officers consider that the key issues to be considered with this application are the housing supply and need, the impact on the green belt, residential amenity, visual amenity, highway safety, and flooding and drainage. The National Planning Policy Framework requires the Council to have a five-year housing land supply, and at this moment in time, the Council can't demonstrate compliance with this requirement. This is a matter that weighs in favour of the application, but, as with the last application, it's not the only determining factor, as other considerations must also be taken into account. The site is located within the Greenbelt. As you can see from the first slide, the red site here is the application site and the green area is the Greenbelt boundary. <coughs> the 
In the Greenbelt, there is a general presumption against inappropriate development, which is by definition harmful to the Greenbelt. Both the legislation and our own adopted policies set out that some development is not considered to be inappropriate in the Greenbelt, and one of these forms of development is limited infilling in villages. Coventry Road is a very long road, and this site is quite divorced from the centre of the village, being over one kilometre away. The proposed development aims to create six new dwellings in this more isolated area, where there are currently only 12 dwellings located in a small group. This is a 50% increase in the number of dwellings and is not considered to be fitting with the term limited infilling as set out in the legislation. The potential impact on the openness of the green belt must also be considered. The National Planning Policy Framework sets out that the fundal, fundamental aim of the green belt is to prevent urban sprawl by keeping areas of land permanently open. This site is currently an open field and pastoral land that provides a gap between 149 and 151 Coventry Road to the northeast and the rest of the ribbon development in the southwest. The loss of this open gap would have a detrimental impact on the Greenbelt by the introduction of permanent development on the site. The land to the east and west is open countryside and this site shares a common border with that. Despite the presence of some fairly substantial trees on the highway side of the boundary with the application site, these cannot be relied upon as an effective screen to the application site. The trees are not protected, so could technically be removed at any time, could become diseased and require removing. In addition, in order to secure access to the application site, some of these trees will require removal. The proposal would therefore introduce development that would have a harmful effect on the openness of the Greenbelt. There are five purposes of including land within the Greenbelt, and one of these is to assist in safeguarding the countryside from encroachment. The development does encroach on the Greenbelt in two ways, by developing an area of land that is not currently developed, and potentially increasing, in, introducing development in depth as set out on the illustrative layout plan that shows garages to the rear of properties. However, this layout is only for illustration and is not being considered as part of the application. So other than from Coventry Road, public views of the site are limited, and as such it's considered that there would only be a limited impact on the character and visual amenities of the Greenbelt from the development proposed. Overall, it's considered that the development causes significant harm to the openness of the Greenbelt. Moderate harm due to the conflict with one of the purposes of including the land in the Greenbelt and significant harm by reason of the development being inappropriate. The proposal is therefore against policy ENV1 of the adopted local plan, which is a saved policy and guidance contained within the NPPF, National Planning Policy Framework. The NPPF also states that local planning authorities are required to give substantial weight to the harm to the Greenbelt when considering planning applications. Very special circumstances must be put forward to outweigh this harm. In this case, there are no very special circumstances that have been put forward that would outweigh the harm to the Greenbelt. Consideration also has to be made of other issues. Matters of residential amenity, visual amenity, flooding and drainage are all addressed on your agendas, but it is not considered as any of these pose any significant issues. In relation to highway safety, the access to the site is being considered as part of this application. Four separate accesses to the site are being proposed as part of this application, down the, the bottom here. So one there, one there, one there, and one on the other side of the access site. Warwickshire County Council highways do not have any objections in relation to the impact on the capacity of the highway network or on visibility. However, in order to achieve this access to the application site, most, if not all, of the planting to the front of the site will have to be removed. As you can see from the picture on the front, this is the planting that we're talking about. 
this access here is this access the, to the bottom of the site there on the right of the application site. These trees are in the ownership of Warwickshire County Council Highways and to date no comments have been received from them as to whether that they will allow any of their trees to be removed to achieve access to this site. It's therefore uncertain as to whether any of the accesses shown on the plan can actually be achieved. If only some trees can be removed or if any access to the site can be achieved if none of the trees will be allowed to be removed. So the recommendation is one of refusal for the reasons as set out on your agenda. Thank you, Claire. Eleanor. Are the lads okay now, yeah? Well, I thought I have as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's from committee. Mm -hmm. The clock will start when you do. Dear councillors and members of the public, this application proposes the erection of six dwellings on the outskirts of Bulkington. The main constraint to this site is its location within the Greenbelt. However, in favour of the development is the fact that the council are unable to demonstrate a five-year supply of housing sites and will therefore have to deliver some housing on Greenbelt land. The application site is also within a sustainable location and is bounded by housing to both sides, which physically limits any further encroachment into the countryside. The council considers that the development is inappropriate within the green belt as it does not constitute limited infilling. However, I disagree. On the basis of the small scale of the proposal and when the site is considered within its wider context, it would comprise of an infill plot. The site is also considered to be brownfield land as it has been used for keeping horses. The site's development would not therefore be inappropriate within the Greenbelt. In accepting this, it must then be considered whether the development would conflict with the five purposes of the Greenbelt. Given the small size of the plot and its position in between existing housing, it is not considered that the development would contribute to the sprawl of large built-up areas or would result in neighbouring towns merging into one another. The site would, however, assist in the regeneration of Bramfield land. It is acknowledged that the development would result in some additional encroachment into the countryside. However, this would be minimal. Furthermore, as acknowledged within the committee report, as the site is adjacent to other dwellings, there would be a limited impact on the character and visual amenity of the Greenbelt. On this basis, it is not considered that the site's development would significantly undermine the five purposes of the Greenbelt. Concerns have also been raised that the proposed access points may result in the loss of some trees. The Highway Authority have not objected to the position of the accesses on the grounds of highway safety and the trees are not protected. It is intended to retain as much boundary, boundary vegetation as possible to help screen the site. There are no developments which perfectly meet all the criteria against which they are to be assessed. Planning is a balancing act which requires the various considerations to be balanced against one another. The site is within the green belt which counts against its development. However, the council are in a position where they have to identify further land for housing and it is very likely that Greenbelt sites will have to be developed for this purpose. The site in question is considered to be acceptable as it is within the built-up area, has good access to nearby facilities and there are no objections raised on grounds of highways, residential amenity or drainage and flood risk. Furthermore, the proposal would continue the existing built form. In this case, the harm associated with the site's location within the Greenbelt would be outweighed by the many factors in support of its development. Thank you for listening and I hope you feel equipped with adequate information to approve this application. Okay, thank you. Are there any points of clarification? Councillor Pumphrey. Uh, you're proposing six houses, six dwellings. Mm -hmm. um, why did you go for the six smallish houses rather than in fewer, larger houses? Uh, I feel that, uh, well, we considered that this would make best use of the site. However, obviously the scheme is only illustrative at this stage, so the, the, the specific type and scale of housing could change um, at the reserve matters stage. But I assume that when you would propose six houses, you were aware that it would mean the removal of all or most of the trees? Um, I don't think, it, well, it hasn't been clarified to date as to whether that would happen. I mean, the... Obviously, we want to retain as much as that, of that screen as possible um, to help screen the development and also assimilate the development within its context. However, if some of the trees needed to be removed, obviously we could propose additional landscaping. Also, in terms of the protection of that tree belt, um, the 
client, the applicant would be willing to have a condition imposed for the protection and replanting if necessary. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. In which case, uh, <coughs> to enable debate to take. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, gentleman earlier tried again. <laughs> I do apologise, Mr. Jones. I've been supporting this because I've lived down Coventry Road for 50 years. Right? The piece of land you're talking about is info land. It's of no importance to anybody whatsoever. Plus, they keep on about the highways. Two and a half years ago, there was a young man killed through lack of lighting. The visibility down there is so bad, and we feel, as residents, and I'm speaking on behalf of the 10 houses that are down there, we feel that by putting these houses up, it'll be a lot safer for the residents. And we'll also get street lighting. And we also feel that, you know, we, we feel that it should go ahead because it's a, it's a piece of land. It was used by John Shortridge, a builder, as a dumping ground. There's only horses ever been kept in it. There's no agriculture being carried out on that, that field or that piece of land that we keep referring to. The trees in which you refer to, they're self-setters. There's only one oak tree there. The trees in which we refer to are self-setters over the years. So as regards the tree situation, there's only one tree there that you really need to be concerned about. But I'm speaking on behalf of the residents down there, and we strongly feel that houses are uh, much needed there, A, for the safety, I mean the council has done totally nothing at all for lighting and safety down that street whatsoever. And I suggest that you come down and look at that site at night, at night time, not in the daytime, at night, because there's about, what, the best part of a quarter of a mile, half a mile, with no lighting whatsoever. Well, I, I correct myself, there's one 250 watt bulb and they call that a street light and it's hidden in between the trees which I feel is inadequate anyway you know I've had councillors down there looking at it you know and they, they they look over the site I mean as regards to, there's no problem there there was but we sorted that ourselves ourselves you know and uh, we feel that we need that patch of land, we need houses there because it's just dead land and it's dangerous, it's utterly dangerous and I do wish that you people had come down at night when it's dark and it's ideal now this time the traffic, there was a young man killed there two and a half, three years ago through lack of lighting he was jogging down the path there's not the path, it, there's curbs inch and a half you can run up the path and it's like running over stone. It's that dangerous. The path needs doing. The lighting needs doing. Thank you. I, I do recall these. Yeah, thank you. Um, are there any points of clarification? No? Right, there's no way to speak. <laughs> Anything you want to come back on? OK, again, to enable debate to take place, can I move the recommendation? which is to refuse planning permission for the reasons as printed. Is that second? No, second. Any member? Councillor Smith. Yeah, this is obviously in my ward. I know this piece of land extremely well. Um, in fact, it was the subject of a pre previous application adjacent to it where we now have a, a caravan plot. Uh, so I spent a lot of time with the residents down there. Uh, it's not a great agricultural use. It doesn't really fulfil anything in terms of greenbelt, in my opinion. Uh, usually I would be totally against development on greenbelt, but for this plot of land, I'm pretty much in favour of it. I don't think it would uh, deter from that row of houses. Um, 
the caravan plot, to be honest with you, caused more trouble down there than this row of houses would. I think the residents down there are all in favour of it. Um, so I would go against officers on, on this and actually vote for it, to be honest. I think there is a there is a grey issue over these trees that obviously would need sorting. I think that's an issue for county, if I'm not mistaken. But if they can overcome that, I don't see a problem with the current layout of six houses. I think they would look fine in that row. Okay. I mean, what we currently have is an outline application. Although yeah. Yeah, it I know it could be anything. us as members yeah. when we get some indicative drawings. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to actually ask about that because um, in, in regard to what weight do we give, we, we've got some design here, uh, it's probably a bit to come back as a detail, I'd have some concerns about because in fact the design is what I call a townhouse mm -hmm. design and I'm not sure that would be appropriate there. Um, but again it's an outline but with some, but with some drawings so what weight um, do we, do we give to that? Those drawings are purely for indication and the applicant and the applicant's agent have provided them to show that you potentially could get six houses on the site and that might be what they could be designed like. But in terms of weights that could be attached to them, they bear no relevance to the planning application and certainly would not be, if you were to approve the application, would not be listed as approved plans in terms of giving anything to the layout, siting or design of the application. Yeah, could I just ask one other question please? It, it's in regard because the the, um, the agent mentioned about the field being brownfield because horses were on it. Just seem, it in, in our interpretation of the green belt, the keeping of horses doesn't fall within the definition of agriculture, but that doesn't mean that it's not previously developed land. It is previously developed land. It's not agriculture, but it's, it's been open land that has never had any built development on it. So therefore, in our interpretation of the legislation, it is open land within the green belt. Well, it's a kind of green field. It's a green field site. That's the Thank you, Chair. I think the one part of the um, application for me is five highway safety because we're talking about as we saw in the photograph up there a considerable amount of greenery that um, may need to be removed highways are out waiting for comments from the forestry section um, as to whether any of the planting can be removed but if none of the trees can be removed what happens with the access? There would be no access if the planet, if the trees were <coughs> not removed. It's, I find that a bit confusing in relation to either saying yes or no to this outline planning permission because that is a, there's a big definite there. Yes, it can be, there will be access or no, there won't be access, whichever way highways choose to go. That's my concern can, with this applicant. Can clarify that if you wish. Um, in terms of highway safety, the County Council don't have any concerns that there will be any impacts on visibility. And if you like, the fact that the trees that need to be removed are in somebody else's ownership is a matter that can be dealt with after the application process. So the grant of planning permission, if you decide that is what you want to do, is not the final legal step in having development take place on the site. So it could be that because county highways don't have any objections, you then decide that you agree with some of the comments that have been made and you want to approve planning permission for this site, they would then have to go and speak to the forestry section. But if the forestry section say, no, you're not taking any of our trees out, then that would mean that the application would not be able to go forward because they need somebody else's permission to do something to allow the access to the site. Any other member that's not already spoken? Smith, you Yeah, I just want to come back on the, um, this is obviously outline permission, uh, and we're looking at six houses there, which, which probably 
might be okay. What's the process if they come back and say, we don't want six houses now, we want two massive ones? Does that come back to planning or does it? Well, it, it would be a fresh application. Yeah. Um, we would then have to consider the previous applications that have been considered on the site. Yeah. They form a material consideration in the determination of a planning application. And we would then have to just see whether that fits with the character of development in the area and see what happens. Okay. But because this application is for the erection of six dwellings, if they want to do anything different, it will be a fresh application to consider whether those changes are still acceptable. So there are certain safeguards there in terms of what they can put on, it's just they might look slightly different. The, the development description isn't <coughs> up to six dwellings, it is for six. Yeah. So if six aren't being built, um, then they will need, require a fresh application. <coughs> okay. So I'll, I'll, perhaps I should, but I can never get my head around this, this to uh, <laughs> outline and indicate indicative drawers because we've been caught out on it before. If anyone should get it, chair, it should be well, you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ashamed to say I don't get it. I wish we could just go back to the old bit where it, an outline application was exactly that. Yeah. An outline on a, on a map, which just indicates whether or not it's suitable for development, and then you deal with the detail later. I think it just confuses things. Maybe it's me that's easily confused. <laughs> if I could just continue a little bit chair I know this bit of land very well and for those that don't know it it isn't a great bit of land it has been used for yeah. grazing mm -hmm. and this use of it would actually be better right I'm going to take one more speaker I thought I'd finish with speakers mm -hmm. uh, Llewellyn Nash. Um, fitting in with what Councillor Smith has just said would, um, with, with six dwellings is there a size constraint on the size of each dwelling so you could have six enormous properties if you wanted. If you, you wouldn't fit six yeah. enormous properties no, on no, no, there. Is there yeah. a size constraint? You know, no. no, no. no. <coughs> if it was approved as an outline today, they would have to come back with detail yeah. on on the design and the location of yeah. the dwellings. Yeah. Okay. yeah? Correct. Correct. Can, Chair, I know you want to move to the vote, but can can I ask for a point of clarification? Yeah. In the introduction. It mentions access being the main issue really here. So by approving this, would we be the end saying, well, four accesses are okay? Yes. yes. All right. And that's what the County Council have looked at so, and then have not raised any objection to. Right. So they would basically, the owner or developer, whoever could have up to, up to four or, or they less. Would have, they would have permission for those exact accesses. So any development that comes along would have to use those exact access Probably. points right. to gain access to the site. If they wanted a reserve matters application, or they could right. come back with a full right. application. That clarifies things. Thank you. Right. Oh, certainly interesting. Um, the recommendation is to refuse planning permission for the reasons printed. All those in favour of that. And against. So the application is not refused. Have I got to go? I actually think that the members are going to need another training session <laughs> on the process <laughs> of the <coughs> committee. Can I what I need now, I know yes. Councillor Smith. You are going to now put something forward. That would be really helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Can I propose that we actually accept uh, this application in its current form as an outline application? For the reasons? For the reasons that um, I feel it is fitting development. Uh, on that land and complements the surrounding development. Yeah, kind of what I heard earlier from the, the speakers was it, it would improve the locality yeah. of yeah. the area, but the, the, the professional would have the proper wording for that. Yeah. 
Yeah. You, you have to yeah, can that. you put something around yeah. that? <laughs> I, I, before we do that, okay. You, you're saying that the very special circumstances is it's a small piece of land. Small it's piece of land, not significant. It matches yeah. the pattern of development in the area. Thank you, Catherine. Okay. Okay. That's what we, what, what we said, yeah. Yeah. That, that was pretty much what I just said. Okay. Okay. I need to second it. Councillor Sergeant. Are members happy, uh, clear on what the... Yeah. Um, I mean, you obviously can tell that I'm not keen on having four accesses, and uh, the fewer accesses, you know, I'm not a, I'm not against having houses there, whatever the number might be, four, five, whatever. But I think uh, having four accesses um, is something to be avoided. I don't know whether um, something could be worded which would um, encourage there being less accesses. No, you have to deal with the application in front of you. No, which is okay. Okay, it's been moved and seconded um, <coughs> to allow the application because of the special circumstances and improving the, the locality. It, it is an outline and it mm -hmm. would have to come back in detail if mm -hmm. approved at this stage. All those in favour of that. And against and abstentions. <laughs> okay, so that, that's approved. Thank you. Takes us on to item five. The land here of 92 to 98 Johnny Thorne Avenue. This application is a full application for the erection of four semi detached dwellings on land to the rear of 92 to 98 Johnny Thorne Avenue. By four semi detached dwellings, I mean two pairs of houses. The land is partly a former garage court, which used to contain, in fact, still does contain, ten garages and is accessed off the end of a relatively narrow road that serves 92 to 98 Donnithorne Avenue and Coldwell Grange Care Home. The remainder of the land is overgrown. So you can see here on the site, that's where the garage courts are. The garages, rather. There has been one letter of objection to the proposal on the grounds of the access not being sufficient. The bin store, blocking of the access road already, highway safety and flood risk. The application is being reported to committee at the request of Councillor Jill Shepherd. Officers consider that the key issues with this application are the principle of residential development and housing need, highway safety, impact on residential amenity and visual amenity, flood risk and drainage, and noise and contamination. The NPPF sets out a presumption in favour of sustainable development. This effectively means that an application should be approved, provided <coughs> that it is in compliance <coughs> with the National Planning Policy Framework, NPPF, and the policies within the Development Plan, unless material considerations indicate otherwise. The site in question is a vacant site in an urban area which has partly been developed in the past. At the present moment, the Council doesn't have the five-year land supply of deliverable housing sites which means that weight is given to the development of this site. The surrounding uses are all residential in nature, so the principle of use of this land for residential purposes is considered acceptable. In relation to highway safety, this issue is covered in depth on your agenda, but in short, there is no objection to the scheme from highways subject to the imposition of conditions. Taking into account the previous use of the site as a garage court, with 10 garages on it, and the proposed use, highways don't consider that there will be a significant difference to the level of comings and goings between the pre previous use and the proposed use, despite the fact that the garages ceased to be used, used some time ago. The National Planning Policy Framework suggests that permission should only be refused on highway grounds where the impacts on highway safety are severe, 
and they are not considered severe in this case. In relation to residential amenity, your agenda item covers this impact in detail. I propose to highlight the key points to you rather than covering all of the detail on the agenda. Separation standards in the residential design guide between 92 to 98 Donnythorne Avenue and the proposed dwellings are met. These properties here are 92 to 98 Donnythorne Avenue. No development directly faces or encloses 108 to 112 even Donnythorne Avenue, which are the properties along this part of the application site. So there's no undue impact on these properties. The separation standard for a window to a blank side elevation is met between the proposal and number 114 Donnythorne Avenue. The garden of 114 Donnythorne Avenue is marked in blue on this plan. The officer report refers to a breach in standards of the length that the house runs along the rear boundary. So moving to this other plan, the garden of 114 here is noted and you can see that the proposal is proposed, the, the house is proposed directly at the rear of this garden. Now ordinarily we wouldn't actually use this standard when assessing how far an extension or a development projects down a boundary. Uh, <clears throat> we would only use it where it is closest to the most usable part of the garden. However, the officer report clarifies that the bulk of the development is actually set away from the boundary, as you can see here. There is space to the side. The impact is lessened because of this, and officers don't consider that this represents a breach in the standards as set out in the residential design guide. As I've said, the blue blocks on these plans relate to where the gardens of number one, the garden of 114 is on the site. Because the proposed properties are in a linear form, there is no impact between each of the properties in terms of conflict on residential amenity within the site. In relation to visual amenity, officers consider that the design of the properties is fairly simple, but this is not at odds with the character of the area. You see on the plan in front of you, I've put the front elevation up, and the bottom photograph is the character and street scene of the area. Now, whilst this site is set behind residential properties in the area, the presence of four dwellings is, in officers' opinion, to create a cohesive development of its own, and there is already development in depth elsewhere along Donnythorne Avenue. In particular, the cul-de-sac serving this site is development in depth. If I go back to the original Sorry, too far. The original plan, Donnythorne Avenue runs along here, and this is development in depth from Donnythorne Avenue. The development is therefore not considered to be at odds with the character of the area. In relation to flood risk and drainage, the site is located within flood zones two and three where there is actually a greater risk of flooding. As such, a flood risk assessment has been submitted with the application. Both the Environment Agency and the County Council Flood Risk Team have been consulted and neither object to the development. In relation to noise and contamination, the Council's Environmental Health Team have been consulted and they don't think that the development will create any unacceptable noise, particularly considering that part of the site was lastly used as a garage court but they have requested that contaminated land conditions are attached to any permission on this site to ensure that if there is any contaminated land from the previous use as garages, it's adequately remediated. The recommendation is therefore one of approval, subject to the conditions as set out on your agenda. Okay, thank you, sir. Councillor Tracy, sir. <coughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak on behalf of the residents. Firstly, I would like to point out that I'm a little concerned that problems regarding the access have not been reiterated from the last application. It was mine and the residents' understanding that this committee approved a previous application based on the developer purchasing a piece of land off Coldwell Grange to widen the access. 
It was then recommended for refusal and refused on flood risk risk grounds. The application is recommended for approval despite the developer not being able to widen the access <coughs> on the belief that there is still a risk to flood. Having spoken with refuse and cleansing, it would appear that they were not consulted regarding this application. However, I have since sought some comments from them, um, which are as follows. Having looked at the construction plans for the land at the <coughs> rear of 92 and 98 Donnythorne Avenue, it appears that entering the site from the access road to Coldwell Grange would be very difficult especially if cars were parked in the vicinity of the turning point. This happens quite often. The only alternative is that residents bring their bins to the edge of the access drive, which they will probably be unwilling to do. I would also point out that based on this access <coughs> issue, this also raises concerns regarding access for emergency vehicles. Officers mentioned the lack of a five-year housing supply. The Government Inspector has approved the Borough Plan with amendments, which can now be used by the Committee as a material consideration. As such, I would ask the Committee to refuse this backland development based on the fact that there is still a flood risk. There is major access issues, particularly with refuse vehicles not being able to access the site, and that we have identified a good supply of more sustainable sites for housing. However, I would ask if the committee are mindful to approve that a site visit take place before a decision is made so that the committee can see the access issues for themselves. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Taylor. Thank you. Mr Chairman and Councillors, I speak as agent for my clients and support the application. From the comments that have been made very recently by Councillor, uh, I was under the impression, having been at the last committee meeting when this site was considering six detached dwellings, that the application was actually recommended for approval subject to a 106 agreement. Secondary comments were made with regard to uh, individuals parking vehicles within the access road. Our site and proposal for the four, uh, two pairs of semi-detached houses, clearly indicate that there is off-street parking for each of those properties, uh, which will alleviate any on-street parking. And we have documentation and drawings setting out the fire and refuse and ref uh, fire and rescue and refuse vehicles can all use the turning head so that they can enter in a forward direction and leave the site in a forward direction. We have worked diligently and considerably with the planners over the last few months uh, since the application was originally submitted and the details and drawing of an application before you all comply with the residential design guide. We deliberately created elevational appearances so that they were in keeping with the surrounding area as had been previously stated. With regard to the flooding, we have had a team who have carried out a flood risk assessment this has been reviewed by the EA and has been accepted. Reading through the report and the observations from the EA, they have requested that a 100 year storm event plus 20% be allowed within our own documentation from the report that has been placed before the committee, there is a 100 year plus 30 and even 40% that has been evaluated. These events do not cause additional risk elsewhere. I'm here to support the application and I would request that you support the application on behalf of your own committee and I thank you. Claire? 
that case, can I enable the debate to take place? Move the recommendation to the Grant Planning Information and subject to the conditions printed. Is that second? I'll second, second that, Chair. Any member? Councillor Shepherd. Thank you, Chair. I mean, this, this development has been before us several times and been refused several times. I do see it as a backland development. I think the access, there is new members to this committee, so if you were mindful for the site visit, I would support that. It is a really narrow access and entrance to this site. I've got concerns it's not being addressed. I've also got concerns that refuse and cleansing. Certainly we consulted, and it says that in the document, that they were, there's nothing to say they were consulted in this one. And the conflict between residents and vehicles is a real concern. There's no, re there's no access in there for pedestrians. There's going to be cars and pedestrians as a one. Um, the developer did say about the, the agent did say about the tearing head, and I believe we put that in our conditions, but it only seems to be for site while it's in development. It certainly does nothing in there to suggest it's going to stay. Um, in regard to the emergency vehicles, I think there's going to be an issue, certainly for a refuse lorry, he's going to find it difficult to find it, he's going to find it even more. So. If committee are mindful of approval, um, I would ask that those conditions put in there around the hours of construction, because there isn't anything at this time. And in regard to the garage site, which the county seems to have mentioned an awful lot, 15 years ago those garages were used and they haven't been used since. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Just before I bring anybody else in, could I just clarify something? because. The agent mentioned about uh, an approval, mm -hmm. and the council just mentioned about each one been refused. But the paperwork says one was approved, others were withdrawn. So were they withdrawn or refused? Mm. They were withdrawn, but there were some objections to them at the time that they were withdrawn. Yeah. So not all the issues <coughs> had been assessed completely at that time. And you, you'll remember, we went for a site visit, that's a shepherd, she right. was there, went for a site visit on the one that was approved, but the section 106 was never signed. Not particularly unusual, because the legislation changed at around that time. Um, and then actually the requests that we were making under the section 106 were, were no longer valid anyway. If I have a particular concern, it's probably around flooding, considering mm -hmm. everything that's going on with, with the weather these mm -hmm. days uh, and what's happened in, in the recent past. But um, this is very close to Cadwell Grange, isn't it, it where is. we had a site visit and we had similar concerns at the time about flooding with that side. So, um, with the proposals that the agent put forward, is that something that we think needs mm -hmm. that concern over two and three? Yes, they submitted a flood risk assessment, which we then sent off to the Environment Agency and the County Flood Risk Team, and both of them have come back with no objections to the development, taking that flood risk assessment into account. Uh, and, and just finally from me, because it was suggested by Councillor Shepherd that if we were looking to approve it, mm -hmm. uh, to restrict that the hours of construction, but I didn't need any hours suggested, what sort of hours would be? Well, it'd be unlikely that we'd be able to put that condition on because hours of development are controlled under other legislation through the environmental health laws, and we're not really supposed to put conditions on that are controlled by other legislation. Certainly on some of the bigger sites these days, we ask for a construction management plan, routing of lorries, etc. And normally within that, a bigger developer will put in the hours um, of operation. But generally, the Environmental Protection Act is, is around, I think it's 7.30 in the morning, um, not before. That. Yeah. But, but yeah. you can't specifically put a condition on restricting the time. You could ask them for a construction management plan, which included hours of operation. Is that a standard, is that condition in there? Because if it's not, I would suggest that we, we would include that. Can include would, would members, regardless of what we decide on here, uh, 
share with me that we put that condition on? Yeah. Just as a, okay, thank you. Right, sorry if I've waffled on. Um, any other member? You were talking about the uh, flood risk and drainage. It, I've, I've, I've seen here that Seven Trent Water also consulted but have not responded to the consultation. That's normal. That's it. <laughs> That's, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Seven Trent are more about the water supply to the site rather than flooding or drainage. Seven, seven, seven Trent is about getting the water out of your tap. <laughs> yeah. So okay, the, the so supply I, is there. The, the, the supply and removing water from the site that is foul water. <coughs> from the toilets, that's yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. Be the environment agency and the county. Yeah. Two it, it, it's yeah. So Seven Trent deal with the sewers that are already there. So that if they're connecting into the existing sewers and taking the water from them, then they wouldn't have any objection. They very rarely have an objection. Sometimes they ask for conditions. Whereas the flood risk team and the environment agency are specifically looking at land drains. They look after day. the drains, do they? The environment, not the so. Seven Trent look after the drains. drains. Yeah. The environment agency look after land that may or may not flood. Okay. So they're the responsibility to okay. for checking that things aren't going to flood. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Is there any other man managed way? Councillor Pomfrey. Um, it was uh, mentioned by Councillor Shepherd, um, uh, Chris Shepherd, about the refuse situation. Uh, I seem to remember when we considered the application for six properties, there was an issue then. Uh, I don't know whether my memory is correct, probably not. But we did talk about there being some provision in the access way there for residents to put their bins, because at the moment they're just going to be expected to take them down the access road um, and, and leave them somewhere or other for collection, which would probably be outside whatever the house number is next to the access road. And, uh, I don't know whether we can make that situation a bit more controlled than it would be otherwise. It's just having four bins or uh, eight bins floating around. No, because I think these, sorry, Councillor Hancock has just pointed to an area of asphalt at behind us in there that properties, properties along here can get rear access. Like you, I certainly remember discussing it when we were out on yes. the site. Uh, this doesn't show a bin stall on here. No. Um, or even where to put them when they're going to be emptied, or it doesn't get mentioned. And, and, and as as yeah, we, we would have to defer the application and consult further with refuse and cleansing and with the applicant as to whether refuse and cleansing would require a bin store, in which case we then discuss with the applicant where to put it. I can't, I can't remember the detail of it. I mean, I, I do see on the drawing there's kind of a turning head within the site, so I've yeah. kind of assumed a refuge vehicle Correct. or the refuge yeah. people are saying yes. the vehicle can drive in yes. and turn around. Which and what I don't know whether that was there before or not, I can't remember. Which is what the county council would look at. They will look at to see whether the, ro the roads can accommodate fire engine, ambulance and a refuse vehicle. So the expectation is that a refuse vehicle could access here and would then turn around in the turning head. So the residents would just leave them at the end of their drive yeah. or front garden yeah. or whatever. Well, I understand Councillor Shepherd's point about was that Councillor Shepherd's point about parking parking in turning heads, but we get that in lots of access roads. Mm. Um, so it's a bit of a non-issue then, yeah, otherwise. It's up to you to weigh the Okay, right. I think we've got to where we are on it. As I say, I'm in. Chair. Can I just pull a bit of clarification mm. around this bin stored for it? Well, since I'll, I'm going to probably sat on every committee this has come to. Um, originally, when the, they were approved for six, it was in regard to the, them buying land off Caldwell Grain yeah. and putting in a bin store and widening the access. That didn't happen, and that's why they didn't get the permission from ourselves. Yeah. And I don't say that's altered myself, but that's up to the committee to decide. Okay, right, well, I'm going to, we need to make a decision on it. Um, also bearing in mind that we include that condition about yes. the hours of construction, it's that mm -hmm. applies to others. The recommendation is as printed, which is the grant planning permission. Um, all those in favour of that?
and against. And abstentions. Okay, that's approved. Uh, I don't have any extra items, so thank you very much for your attendance and declare the meeting closed. Thank you.